Today we will be praying Psalm 1. I am absolutely certain that God will speak strongly to your heart through this prayer. Stay until the end because there is a response from God for your life in every area, finances, relationships, family, marriage, every aspect. God has a blessing to deliver to you. And Psalm 1 is a very powerful psalm. We will be reading it, praying it, and God will speak to you through my life. Before we begin, don't forget to leave your prayer request in the comments because I always read the comments and present each prayer request before God. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and activate notifications to receive new prayers consistently. Share this video with a friend, for it will certainly be a blessing in all our lives. Just see what God is revealing to us through this mighty psalm. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. In this verse, we can find a hint, a victorious counsel for our lives. And what is this victorious counsel? The Word of God tells us that we are blessed when we do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Whether in our marriage, our work, or our lives. Never listen to the advice of people who are far from God, for their counsel can destroy your life. Instead, always listen to the advice of men and women of God, because through a word of faith, through guidance, you can receive great blessings. And verse 1 of Psalm 1 tells us that blessed is the person who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. In other words, we cannot have friendships with people who bring us down, deceive us, mistreat us, or do not desire our success and growth. There are people listening to me now, and many blessings in there. Lives are being hindered because they associate and converse with negative people. When we surround ourselves with negativity, we end up receiving that negativity as well. Therefore, we need to surround ourselves with positive people, with people of God. There are blessings that are withheld because a person associates with bad influences. There is a saying that holds a great truth, tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you who you are. Walk with people of God, walk with women of God, with men of God. Do not have friendships that distance you from the Lord because that can be detrimental to your life. That's why Psalm 1 tells us, Blessed is the man. The man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. And in verse 2, it says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, he meditates day and night. This person is one who meditates on the word of the Lord day and night. You know what happens to this person. Verse 3 shows us, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. In other words, when we please God, when we stand firm in His presence, everything we do prospers. My sister, my brother, there are things that often don't prosper because we are not standing firm on the Word. But when you are firm in the Word, everything will prosper. Sometimes, there may be situations that seem not to be prospering, but in reality, they are prospering. And I want to tell you that God has prosperity for your life, prosperity in all areas, financial prosperity, spiritual prosperity, and family. Prosperity but we must obey the presence of the Lord. We must be obedient to God. Our obedience to the Father is very important. It is crucial that we walk with people who draw us closer to God, people who lead us to victory, and people who help us grow. If you have been walking with someone who brings you down, drains your energy, distance yourself from these negative people because they are obstacles in your life. 
That is why it is vital for us to walk in the Word of God and walk with people of God. The Word says, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. This is the blessing of Psalm 1. What is the blessing of Psalm 1? The blessing of Psalm 1 is that if we stand firm in the presence of the Lord, we will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, which bears fruit in its season, and its leaves do not wither. In other words, you will be a prosperous person, and I want to prophesy in your life that you will be. You are a fruitful tree, and you will bear fruit. And if you are producing fruit, you will produce even more fruit because God has prosperity for you. God has blessings for you. See. God loves you so much, God loves you so much. The Bible says that He is jealous for us. God does not want to lose our lives to the enemy. God loves us deeply. That's why God asks us to be obedient to His Word, obedient to His commands. And the Word of God tells us even more, the wicked are not so, Psalm 1. But they are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Why? Verse 6. Because the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. In other words, living far from God is a great danger. We need to be close to the Lord. If you are going through a difficult time, do not doubt God. He will surprise you and grant victory in your life. You know why? Because you are a tree planted by the rivers of water. You are God's eagle, and eagles are meant to soar in high places. Eagles were not made to fly with sparrows. Eagles were made to fly with eagles. You are a lion. You are a lioness. You know why? Because the Bible says that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah, and you are a child of God. You are a daughter of the Lion of the tribe of Judah. You are a son of the Lion of the tribe of Judah. So, let me ask you, what is a child of a Lion? A child of a Lion is a Lioness, a child of a Lion is a Lion. Therefore, if Jesus is the Lion of the tribe of Judah, and we are His children, then we are Lions and Lionesses. Lions do not walk with wolves, Lions walk with lions and lionesses. We cannot mix with negative people, gossipers, envious individuals, or those who constantly lie. Because when you associate with these kinds of people, little by little, you also start committing the same sins. If you stop and have a conversation for a minute with a gossiper, before you know it, you get involved in gossip too. It's very difficult for you to sit with a gossiper and start gossiping and not fall into that sin. That's why we need to be watchful. Watchful of who we converse with. Watchful of whom you share your secrets with. There are people who approach you wanting you to confide in them, but in reality, that person is only near you to witness your downfall. There are people who come close to you, not to help you, but to bring you down. But the blood of Jesus Christ has the power to deliver us and keep away all these evil people from our lives. It is clear and evident that there will always be evil people trying to enter our lives, but we have to flee from the appearance of evil. You are chosen by God, and that is why God is using me to bring this word to you. Do you know who our worst enemy is? Our worst enemy is not the one who openly declares themselves as your enemy. Our worst enemy is the one who claims to be our friend, but in reality, they are a false friend. They say they are your friend, but deep down, they want to witness your downfall. They say they love you. They say they care about you and even celebrate your success, but in truth, 
they want to. See you fail. Therefore, we must be very cautious. Of course, true friends do exist. Of course, there are people who genuinely want to. See our success, growth, and happiness. Unfortunately, there are also people who don't want to see us happy, who don't want to see us. Thrive or progress in life. But I have news for you, even if everyone else doesn't want to see you succeed, even if there's a group of people out there hoping for your downfall, they will be ashamed and confused. Why? Because you will not fall. You will remain standing. You will not lose, you will conquer. And all those who want to witness your defeat will have to witness the victory of God in your life, in the name of Jesus. Hey, a time of victory is approaching for you. A time to smile is coming. The time of suffering is about to end. The time to sing has arrived. But be watchful. Now, stand firm in the presence of the Lord because God will honor your faith. God will honor your hope, so simply rest your soul and distance yourself from all negative people, from those who have no commitment to God and want to drag you into the world. You might say to me, but can't I talk to a non-believer? Of course you can, but we need to understand that we are here on this earth to influence and win people over to Jesus. We cannot sit in the company of mockers. In other words, we should not join a group of people who speak ill of the gospel, who criticize A and B, who speak poorly of C and everyone else. Sister, brother, you cannot be part of that circle. Let's be vigilant. Let's pray. Let's be cautious about the people we engage with, the conversations we have. Let's be attentive because Psalm 1 reveals this to us. Psalm 1 reveals that we need to seek the presence of God and avoid sitting among mockers. If we act and live accordingly, we will be like a tree planted by streams of water. Our leaves will not wither, and everything we do will prosper. Amen. I want to offer a special prayer for your life. I want to pray for you so that the blessings of Psalm 1 may descend upon your life and that you may be like a tree planted by streams of water. May everything you do prosper greatly for the glory of God. Let's pray. Holy Spirit of Truth, we stand in your presence. I want to lift up the life of your servant, the life of your child who is listening to me at this moment. God, intervene with your providence and grant great victories in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Open doors and bestow your blessings upon us. God, pour out upon us the blessings of Psalm 1. May we be trees of righteousness and may we bear fruits, fruits of blessings, victories, and achievements. Lord, bless our lives. Lord, open the doors and floodgates of heaven. Pour out blessings and showers of blessings upon the lives of your people. We ask this in the name of Jesus, and we thank you in advance because you are faithful, you are awe-inspiring, Lord. May the blessings of Psalm 1 be upon the life of your daughter, upon the life of your son. God, grant strength, grace, and encouragement. God, keep away from us. All negative friendships, all friendships that wish to see our downfall, all false friendships that desire our ruin. Lord, keep away from us the wicked man. You guard us under your blood, and may you bless our lives. In the name of Jesus, we ask, and in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Thank God and take possession of your victory. Take possession of your blessing. You are a tree of righteousness. You are a tree that bears fruit in the presence of God. Remain steadfast in the presence of the Lord, for great is the reward that comes from above, from God. I have a word from God for your life, a prayer for your life. Let's pray Psalm 91, 
which is the psalm of divine protection, and may God protect, guard, and deliver our lives. Follow this prayer until the end because God will bless you abundantly and powerfully, protecting, prospering, and blessing you in all areas of your life. Psalm 9-1 is one of the most well-known psalms in the Bible, and through this psalm, we can find God's answers for our lives, relief for our souls, deliverance for us and our families. Psalm 91 has 16 verses, and we will be reading and praying based on this psalm, and divine protection will come to your home. Please also share your prayer requests in the comments of this video. I will present your prayer requests to God. Comment below with your prayer request. It doesn't matter how simple or important your prayer request is. God answers everything, from the smallest to the impossible things. God has the power to do the supernatural. So make your prayer request. If you know a family member or friend who needs to hear this psalm, share it with them. Perhaps this psalm will enrich their soul and strengthen their spirit because blessings need to be shared among brothers and sisters. So let us pray. Psalm 91 Verse 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This first verse shows us a divine promise for you and me, a spiritual promise for our lives. The text is very clear in saying, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In this verse, we see some mysteries of God and important things for our lives and protection. Notice that the text says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Who is the Most High being referred to here? It is God Himself, the Almighty God. And who is this person who dwells in the secret place of the Most High? This person is me. And it's you, and it's you. This person who hides in the secret place is us. We are guarded in the secret place of the Most High. This means that our adversaries cannot see us, cannot perceive us, because we are hidden in God. We are protected in God. God is protecting your home, your family, your work, your business, your children. Everything is under divine protection. That's why the text also says, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, I, you, we who are hidden in the secret place of the Most High, can rest in the shadow of the Almighty, and in that shadow, we find rest. The Bible says that the people of Israel walked through the desert, and the desert sun was scorching, extremely hot. So, to prevent the people from dying in the middle of the desert, God would send a shadow where the people of Israel could rest peacefully. This shadow represents the rest of God for our lives, for our souls. Therefore, rest in the Lord. Don't be anxious about anything in this life. Simply rest. Because God is watching over you. God is protecting you. You are in the safest place in the universe. You are in the secret place of the Most High. Verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, He is my God, my refuge, and my fortress, in Him I will trust. Look at this beautiful and impactful verse 2. It says, I will say of the Lord. You can say to God, you know what you can say to God. You can say that He is your God, that He is your refuge, that He is your fortress, and you will trust in Him. Notice that the psalmist says that God is a refuge and fortress. In other words, you can take refuge in Him. He is a fortress because He guards you. The prophet Isaiah asked, Can a mother forget her? Nursing child, those who are listening to me, whether you are a mother or a daughter, you know very well how a mother protects her child when someone wants to harm them. See, this mother guards, she protects. I am sure that as a mother, if someone tries to harm 
Your child, you become fierce. You don't let anyone touch your children. It's the same with God. In the book of Isaiah, he says that. Even if a mother, even if a mother who has an almost divine love, even if this mother were to forget her child, the Lord your God will never forget you. And the text also says that we are in the palm of God's hand, and the walls surround us, and what are these walls? These walls are the fortress, the protection, the angels of the Lord guarding our lives. Hey, you are in the refuge. You are in the fortress, in the shadow of the Almighty. No harm, no plague, no curse can come against your life because you are secure. You are safe in the shadow of God's omnipotence. Verse 3 tells us, I am reading verse by verse and explaining each verse of Psalm 91. And verse 3 says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Look, this verse is beautiful. God is assuring us that he will deliver us from the snare of the fowler. Have you ever hunted birds? It may sound ironic, but it's true. The text says, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Those who have hunted birds know very well how it works. To catch a bird, you need to set a snare, a trap. To capture that bird, to ensnare it. And the helpless bird usually falls into these traps, these snares. God is saying that we are like helpless birds. But when the enemy sets the traps, the snare of the fowler, who is the helpless bird? It is us. The enemy sets bird snares to catch us. That's why Peter says that Satan walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So the enemy sets the snares of the fowler. But in verse 3 of Psalm 91, God makes us a promise, and the promise is that he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Perilous pestilence refers to the forces of evil, the harmful plagues. God will deliver us from these harmful plagues and from the snare of the fowler. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that every snare of the fowler and every trap the enemy has set against your life at this moment is now broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God undoes every snare of the fowler. Against your home, your family, your spouse, your children, your relatives, brothers, and friends. Every snare of the fowler that brings sickness, every snare of the fowler that hinders your business, that hinders your financial life. Now, at this moment, we rebuke in the name of Jesus every snare and declare it broken against your life, your home, your family, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive God's deliverance in your life. You can say, Amen. Verse 4 of Psalm 91 says, He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. In this verse 4, God is assuring us that he will cover us with his feathers. How can that be, God? Does he have feathers? Because here in Psalm 91, God is representing himself as a mother. Eagle, and the mother eagle takes her eaglets and places them under her feathers. Are you an eaglet? God is the mother eagle who guards. The eaglets, and the mother eagle spreads her wings and places her eaglets beneath her wings. That's why verse 4 is saying that he, God, will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings, the wings of this eagle called God, you will be safe, and God's truth is your shield and buckler, your protection that blocks the attacks of the enemy. That's why Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. God's truth is a shield for our lives. Verse 5 says, You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Notice that the text says we will not fear the terror by night. Generally, the forces of evil entities 
Notice that in macabre rituals, the forces of evil usually ask for sacrifices to be made at night, at midnight. However, midnight is not the devil's hour. The devil doesn't have a specific hour, all hours belong to God. The day, the afternoon, the night belong to God. Satan simply likes to imitate the things of God. He likes to transgress the things of God. And notice that evil entities usually ask for offerings, sacrifices during the night, at midnight. But we can see in the Bible that many miracles happened at midnight. The Red Sea parted at midnight. Paul and Silas prayed and sang at midnight, and there was an earthquake, and they were set free. The Bible says that at midnight the bridegroom called, and the virgins, the brides, responded to the bridegroom. In other words, several Bible verses talk about miracles happening at midnight. So, midnight is not the devil's hour. However, the enemy likes to imitate God. That's why he asks for wicked deeds to be done at midnight. But in verse 5, God is showing us the following, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. God is telling us here not to fear, not to be afraid of the works of evil. I often receive messages from people who are terrified of wicked deeds that have been done against them. And I always present this psalm because we don't need to fear the works of evil. Why? Because the one who is with us is greater than the army, greater than the navy, greater than the air force, greater than hell, greater than the angels, greater than the universe. The one who is with us is the Almighty, the one who dwells in the hiding place of the Most High, of the Omnipotent. You can rest assured. So, do not be afraid because you are protected by God. Take hold of this protection. Keep this word in your heart, you shall not fear, for I will not fear the terror by night. I will not fear the terror by night because I dwell in the hiding place of the Most High and in the shadow of the Omnipotent. I can rest. Because He is our fortress, and we have Him as our refuge. For this reason, we do not fear the terror by night or the arrow that flies by. Day because the enemy does not only work at night. Verse 5 clearly shows us that we will not fear the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day. What does it represent? What does the arrow that flies by day mean? The arrow that flies by day represents the wicked attacks. That happened during the day. However, we do not need to fear. Why? Because God is our refuge and fortress. When you experience fear, it means you are not trusting in divine protection. Because the text clearly shows us that He is our shield and stronghold, that he guards us under the shadow of his wings. So why fear? What is the purpose of fear? Do not be afraid. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. In other words, you have 24-7 protection. Jesus made us a promise, saying, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have divine protection in your life. Do not be afraid. Let's continue. Verse 6 Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Here, the psalmist is still talking about the works of evil, the forces of darkness. Verses 5 and 6 are closely related. You shall not fear the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness. These are demons that roam in the darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. In other words, God is telling us not to fear the forces of evil. I don't understand how a Christian can fear the forces of evil. 
You cannot fear the forces of evil because greater is he who is with us than he who is in the world. Amen. Verse 7 is a well. Known verse and it says, A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Look. The psalmist is saying that even if a battalion, even if an army of demons, of evil forces, falls at your side, falls at your right hand. Nothing will happen to you. Why? Because you are protected. This is the protection of God, my sister, my brother. Verse 7. Let me read it again because this verse is so beautiful. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Did you understand? You are protected by God. Nothing can touch a single hair of yours if you believe with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength in God's promise recorded in this Psalm 91. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but you will not. You will not be affected because God is with you. Say Amen. Say, I claim this. Word for myself. Verse 8. Only with your eyes shall you look, and see the reward of the wicked. In this text, God is telling us through. The psalmist that while we rest, while we receive God's protection and deliverance, we will witness the reward of the wicked, God's judgment. Upon the wicked. We will see with our own eyes God's justice being done. Verse 9. Psalm 91 says, Because you have made the Lord. Who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place? Look, the text reinforces what was said in verse 1 and verse 2, reminding us once again that God is our refuge, and in the Most High, we can dwell. Amen. Now, verse 10 says, No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Let me repeat because this verse is too beautiful. Glory. No evil shall befall you. What is God saying to you? Nothing will happen to you because I protect you, I guard you, I deliver you, I defend you. God is not saying that two or three or four or five evils will happen in your life. God is not saying that all the evils will happen in your life. No, no, no. God is saying that no, absolutely no evil shall befall you. No evil shall befall you. It means that nothing will happen to you because God protects you. But you need to believe with all your heart, trust in God with all your soul, knowing that He guards and defends you, that He is your help, your refuge, your fortress. No evil shall befall you and no plague shall come near your dwelling. Hey, your dwelling is protected. The north of your dwelling is protected. There are angels of God spread around. The north of your dwelling, in the south of your dwelling, in the east, in the west, in the four corners around your dwelling, on the roof of your dwelling. God is sending mighty angels now to your dwelling. Mighty angels, Guardian angels, angels of God, mighty in battle, are being sent at this very moment to protect, to guard, to deliver your dwelling because that's what angels are for. Angels are divine protectors, and they are surrounding your dwelling to protect your life right now. Feel peace in your soul. Feel peace in your heart. There are angels of God surrounding your dwelling, protecting your life in the name of Jesus. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come. Near your dwelling, your family, the lives of your children, the life of your husband, the life of your wife, your work, your friends, your colleagues, your classmates. No harm will come to you because God is protecting you. Amen. Say Amen. Comment below. Amen. Verse 11. Tells us why. 
because he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. This verse 11 is so beautiful. God is saying that the angels of the Lord will guard us in all our ways. Do you know what this means? When you go to the bakery, the angels are guarding you. When you go to the bank, to the lottery, the angels are guarding you. When you go to the mall, the angels are guarding you. When you go to church, the angels are guarding you. That's why the text says that he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Verse 11. So, all your ways are guarded by God. Rest, trust. Be at peace. Now, there is a caveat. Jesus said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Of course, if you see a deserted street, you're not going to test God and say, God is guarding me, so I'll pass through here recklessly, imprudently, and God will protect me. God guards us when we are in accordance with His will, right? Don't stray from the Lord's will, don't stray from the Father's will. Stand firm in the will of Jesus and be prudent. There are many people who may say, since God is guarding me, I'll accelerate the car to over 100 km per hour, and God will protect me, right? Negative. God will protect us, but we also have to be prudent. We have to be vigilant. God protects, but we have to do our part as well. When Satan told Jesus to jump from the pinnacle, Satan quoted this verse to Jesus, saying that the angels would protect and guard Jesus so that he would not strike his foot against a stone. But Jesus said to Satan, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. In other words, we have divine protection. God guards us with his angels in all our ways, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't be watchful, on the contrary, we must also be vigilant. The street is deserted. Avoid passing through the deserted street. Are you hearing news of crime in a particular area? Avoid going through there because God provides greater protection. We need to be prudent. That being said, let's move on to the next verse, verse 11. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Verse 12 says, They will bear you up in their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. God is saying here that the angels will provide protection for us in the smallest details. Yes, we have divine protection. When human resources run out, God's resources arrive. If there is no human alternative, then God's alternatives come into play. Understand this, if there are no other possibilities and you have to pass through that place, then God will guard you. But if there is a possibility for you to be vigilant and make a better choice, then we cannot test the Lord our God. However, God is giving us the assurance that He will guard us, even in the smallest details. When the text says that the angels will guard you, so that you do not strike your foot against a stone, it means that God will protect you in every aspect of life. Amen. Next verse, verse 13, says, You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. This text helps us understand what Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 when he sent out the seventy disciples on a mission. The story is narrated in Luke chapter 10. Jesus gave them power and authority. He said, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, Satan, the forces of evil. In verse 13 of Psalm 91, the lion and the venomous serpent are being described. And God is saying that we will tread upon the lion and the serpent, we will trample them underfoot. But the serpent will be under the feet of the son or the son of the lion. God is saying that we will tread upon the lion and the serpent. Why is the enemy depicted in the Bible as a lion? 
Even Peter says, Satan walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The word Satan is a Greek word and means serpent. In the Garden of Eden, the enemy presented himself to Eve in the form of a serpent. So Satan is the false. Lion because the true lion is Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah. But God is saying that he will grant us spiritual authority to trample upon. The works of evil. This means that God is saying, I am giving you authority to overcome the forces of evil. Treading upon the forces of. Evil represents that. You will tread upon the lion, the serpent, you will put your feet upon the offspring of the lion, the serpent. Verse 13 is stating that God will give us spiritual authority to crush, tread upon, overthrow, and undo the forces of evil. Verse 14 says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, I will set him on high because he has known my name. This verse is God speaking to us, saying what? Because he has set his love upon me, meaning because we have loved God, because we love the Lord. For this reason, because of this love we have for God, God is saying that because of this love, He will also deliver us, set us on high. Because we know His name. These are the privileges of loving God, of having a friendship relationship with the Creator. When we are friends with God, we have in Him our refuge, our strength, our spiritual protection 24-7. Verse 15 says, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him, and honor him. God is guaranteeing to us in verse 15 that when we call upon his name, he will answer us. He will be with us in times of trouble, he will deliver us, and he will honor us. God is giving us the assurance that in moments of anguish, we will not be alone. Even though moments of anguish may seem dark, even though they may seem lonely, devastating, God is there, guarding our lives. And what about that story we all know about the footprints in the sand? A man walking on the sand saw the scenes of his life in the sky. And as he walked on the sand, he saw two sets of footprints, his own and Jesus' footprints, depicting the most beautiful moments of his life. And suddenly, as the scenes changed and the saddest moments of his life began to appear, only two footprints were seen in the sand. Then the man said to God, In the moments when I needed you the most, Lord, you left me alone. Then God says, No, those footprints in the sand are not yours, they are mine. So he asks, And where are my footprints? Then God says, Those footprints are mine. Yours didn't appear because at that moment I was carrying you in my arms, meaning that in times of distress, God is carrying us in his arms. That's why Jesus said, who needs a doctor, the saint or the sick? So Jesus came for the sick. If you are tired and burdened, God can relieve you, and receive relief for your distress, relief for your soul, and peace in your spirit in the name of Jesus at this moment. And verse 16. Concludes Psalm 91, saying, With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. When the text says, With long life will I satisfy him, God is giving us the promise that we will have a long life, that we will have an abundance of days. Long life to those who love the Lord. Long life to those who trust in God. Long life to those who have God as their refuge, to those who have God as their friend. Long life to those who seek the face of God. And God says more, I will give you long life, abundance of days. And I won't stop there. I will give even more. I will give my salvation to those who love me, says the Lord. These are the blessings. The Blessings of Psalm 91 are 16 verses, and here we have read verse by verse, explaining each one. A blessing, isn't it? Comment down below.
in the comments what you thought of the explanation of each verse of Psalm 91. Share it with a friend. Some people read Psalm 91 and don't understand, but through this explanation, you were able to understand verse by verse. If you have any questions, comment below, and I will be reading. Amen. If possible, I will be reading. If there are many comments, it may take me a while to read, but I will make an effort to read the comments. So leave your prayer requests because we are going to pray now. Hold on, the video is not over yet. We are going to pray. Now I want to pray the prayer of Psalm 91 because the first step was for you to understand Psalm 91. Now that you understand the meaning of each word of Psalm 91, let us now, based on what we have read, what we have learned, pray, pray asking. God for the blessings of Psalm 91 in our lives. Wherever you are, close your eyes. If you can, leave your prayer requests in the comments, and let us pray with faith because the prayer of faith will save the sick. The prayer of faith will heal the afflicted. The prayer of faith will open doors of employment. The prayer of faith will make supernatural miracles happen in our lives. Close your eyes with me and let us pray in this moment. Holy Spirit of Truth, Almighty God, Omniscient, Omnipresent, and Creator of Heaven and Earth. You are Lord in the heavens, you are Lord in the seas. You are the Lord of the stars. You are the Lord of the universe. We invoke your name, O Most High God. God who reveals himself in Psalm 91. You are the Most High, our Divine Protection. And we ask for your blessing, O Lord, in our lives. Your grace manifested, Holy Spirit of Truth. I present the life of this woman who listens to me. The life of this man who listens to me. God, through this prayer, come, Lord, pour out your power, your grace, your anointing, your virtue, your strength. Come and grant spiritual strength to your people. Come and baptize with your spirit, renew spiritual forces, energies. God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, send your cloud, your protection, your glory, your power, your love, O Almighty God. Forgive, O Lord, the sins of your people. Forgive all iniquity. Come, Lord, cleanse our soul, our spirit, forgiving. Our faults, our weaknesses committed through thoughts or feelings, actions, and gestures. Everything, Lord, that has been disapproved by you, everything, Lord, that has displeased and saddened your Holy Spirit, and that we have spoken, thought, or done. We ask for forgiveness at this hour. Forgive us with your precious blood, Lord, cleanse our altar, cleanse our garments, making them whiter than snow. God, in the name of Jesus, come, Lord, with your power, come and restore marriages, come and restore relationships, come and restore families. God, we ask you, Lord, for all the people who are homeless, for all the people who have lost their loved ones in tragedies. Come and guard, come and deliver, come and protect in the name of Jesus, sending your provision. Sending your mercy. Give, Lord, deliverance to your people. God, we do not fully understand your will, but we do not surrender to your will, asking for your mercy, asking, O oh God, for your peace over Brazil, over the world. Come and rebuke wars, come and rebuke conflicts. Come and bring your peace, Lord, into families, come and restore, God, in the name of Jesus, the financial life of your people, bless the sentimental life of your church, bless in the life, Lord, of this woman who listens to me, who hears me. Come and restore the sentimental life, the financial life, the family life in all areas of her life, of his life. Come and bring health, come and bring peace. 
If there is any illness, place your hand on your illness. If there is someone who is sick in your family, place your hands on the illness in the name of Jesus. Pray these words with me in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every illness, leave now, disappear now, vanish now in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus, heal the illnesses. Now, in the name of Jesus, you are the God of Psalm 91. The Most High, our refuge, our stronghold, and we trust in you. Deliver us. From evil, deliver us from evil. O God, protect our house from the violent man, the bloodthirsty man, the corrupt man. God, deliver. Lord, the house of your servant, the house of your servant from all evil. In the name of Jesus, guard our lives under your mighty hand. Under your protection, under your blessing, Lord. Release upon us the blessings of Psalm 91, may each verse of Psalm 91 be fulfilled in our lives, guarding us, delivering us, protecting us, defending us, granting us, Lord, abundance of days, long life for our lives, long life with health, with prosperity in the name of Jesus. Receive now, you who are listening to me. You who are hearing me. Woman of God, man of God, who is listening to me at this moment. Receive health in your body, receive prosperity in your life, financial prosperity, emotional prosperity, family prosperity, prosperity in all areas of your life. Receive now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and thanks be to God, say yes with me. I take possession of my victory. Repeat once again, I take possession of my victory. I take possession of my blessing. I take possession of my blessing, my victory, my prosperity. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May God bless your life. May God bless our lives, because if you are blessed, I am blessed too. When one wins, everyone wins because we are the family of Jesus. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be in your heart. May the blessings of Psalm 91 be in your home. Powerful Prayer Based on Psalm 23 the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul, He guides me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for You are with me, Your rod and Your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Praise to Jesus. Hello, my brothers and sisters. May you receive the peace of the Lord. May God illuminate your minds. From this prayer, may you find both a prayer for prosperity and a prayer for strength, encouragement, and the tranquility that God is our provider. Amen. Dear God and Heavenly Father, In this moment, we lift our hearts to you, seeking comfort and peace for all those facing challenges. My God. Financial difficulties. We understand that amid worries and uncertainties, it's easy to feel overwhelmed, hopeless, worried. Yet, when we place our trust, my Father, in your infinite goodness, wisdom, and mercy, then there is always a light to illuminate our paths. We ask the Heavenly Father to send strength and courage to all my brothers and sisters subscribed to this channel, those who have just arrived and are facing these financial issues. Grant each one the necessary confidence so they can persevere and believe that better days are coming and are near. It's close. In the name of Jesus, I now cast out all feelings of despair, all feelings of scarcity, worry. Grant confidence to your children, my Father, so they may persevere. May they believe in the power of prayer and that better days are coming, closer than they imagine. 
Beloved Father, help them find creative solutions, enabling them to identify opportunities and act wisely in the face of financial challenges. Many of my brothers and sisters here with me today have very specific concerns. Father, I may not know them, I may not be aware, but you know, and you will provide. For those who feel compelled, open your hearts and share your greatest difficulties in the comments. I will pray, intercede, seek the Lord on your behalf, so he may grant you strength. Supernatural strength to confront these challenges. Lord, grant each one peace of mind to manage the stress and anxiety stemming from financial difficulties. Help them maintain serenity even in adverse circumstances. Father, bestow discernment so they can make wise decisions, practice patience, and make choices at the right time and moment. My brothers and sisters, I feel the urge to pray that you release any haste, any leap ahead of caution from your mind and heart. Many rush, many make hasty decisions, leading to financial entanglement and harm. Receive peace, tranquility. Do not make any decision without God's guidance in your life. And now, I'm about to share a truly powerful insight within this prayer. Oh, how do we make decisions with tranquility and God's approval? It's a step-by-step -step process. First, seek guidance. Explore alternative options, alright? Before making a decision, look within yourself. Check if your soul feels at peace. Request spiritual discernment to guide your choice, for when you seek this, any and every decision you make will be accompanied by a peace beyond understanding. It will permeate your soul, allowing you to decide without regret or worry. Perhaps you've experienced this, making a decision and then dwelling on numerous other possibilities, wondering. What if I had done this? What if I had chosen that? That's not true peace of mind. Amen. Now, ask right here in the comments. Write, Lord, grant me peace of mind. Let every decision I make be precise. Remember what I'm telling you and type it down below. Lord, bestow upon me peace of mind in my decisions. Don't hesitate, my brothers and sisters. When we pray here, know that the Lord Jesus is with us, interceding on our behalf. Communicating our prayers to the Father, and working miracles, wonders, and marvels. Just believe. There's no other mediator between God and humanity than Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We're here, pleading, expressing ourselves. This channel has become a large family, and together we're praying. I've received countless testimonials of blessings and triumphs. But there's that brother, that sister who hesitates, who wavers, unsure whether to write or not. Let's try this again. And now, I'm about to share a truly potent insight within this prayer. How can we attain serenity and divine approval in our decisions? Here's what you do. Seek guidance, naturally. Explore alternative paths, okay? Before finalizing any choice, turn inward. Gauge whether your soul finds tranquility, alright? Appeal for spiritual insight to navigate your decision-making, for when you do, a remarkable sense of peace, beyond comprehension, will accompany every decision you make. It will infuse your very soul, enabling you to decide without regret or concern. Perhaps you've encountered this situation before, making a decision and subsequently pondering myriad alternate routes, asking. What if I'd chosen differently? What if I'd taken that other path? This internal turmoil isn't genuine peace of mind. Amen. Now, I invite you to request it, right here in the comments. Write, Lord, grant me peace of mind. May each decision I make be resolute. Take note of my words and type them below. Lord, endow me with tranquility for my decisions. Don't hesitate, my dear brothers and sisters. As we pray together, remember that the presence of the Lord Jesus is here, interceding on our behalf, conveying our prayers to the Father. And working wonders, miracles, 
and extraordinary feats. Just believe. Jesus Christ of Nazareth stands as the sole mediator between God and humankind. We gather here to entreat, to open our hearts. This channel has blossomed into a close-knit family, united in prayer. I've received countless stories of blessings and victories. Yet, there may be a sibling among us who hesitates, who wavers, grappling with the decision of whether or not to share. You have nothing to lose, so go ahead and share in the comments, Lord, grant me discernment, grant me peace of mind to make decisions. Loving God, Almighty and Holy God, we beseech you to touch the hearts of each person writing these words, especially those in need of this supernatural reinforcement. Inspire them to cultivate generosity within themselves, as the blessing arrives. May they be generous to those around them, feeling at ease while making decisions. Achieving desired outcomes, breaking free from potential debts and financial constraints. May they recognize employment opportunities, business prospects, and extra sources of income, working freely, my father, and reaping profit from their efforts. Bestow upon them hope, renewed faith, especially those striving to balance accounts, repay debts, and meet basic needs. Remind them daily that, though the journey is challenging, you remain the God of provision, in control of all things. My Father, you care for your children. This is why we gather here in prayer. Write this in uppercase letters. The Lord takes care of me. Everyone needs to know this. Write it in the name of Jesus. The Lord takes care of me. As you write these words, the forces of darkness crumble. When you declare this truth, the adversary loses his power. He is defeated, a failure. He has already lost. And we? We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Lord, we have confidence that all those who are here writing, opening their hearts, engaging in this prayer, are freely exercising a faith, a faith in your word that has been read, a faith that you are our provider and supply all our needs through the grace found in Christ Jesus. Today, we gather in prayer to strengthen ourselves, my Father, and to face challenging times of financial uncertainty. Amidst these adversities, often, you have pulled us from tight spots and placed us in high refuge. In this moment, Lord, we want to reinforce that each heart here has an owner, and that owner is Jesus of Nazareth, our provider. Your holy word has been read in Psalm 23, assuring us that you are our shepherd. We shall not want. Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life, and in you, we find a peace that surpasses all understanding. We implore you to attend to each individual facing financial issues, those who have submitted their prayer requests. My Father, this is our supplication. We are calling out in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. May this month be a month of change. May you, Lord, multiply our income. Let's write it here, my brothers and sisters. It's for those who have faith. I understand if you lack faith, it's alright. I will pray for you. But for those of you who have strong faith, right here, Lord, multiply my income. Amen. Write this down, O Lord, multiply my income. Amen. For those who are faithful in little and much, be assured that God will uplift you, you'll see. Now, for the more daring ones, write it like this, Lord, triple my income. Do you have the courage to write that? And for those who are even bolder, Lord, quadruple my income. My brothers and sisters, I'm speaking with conviction because I've experienced it myself. I've seen a small business start as one thing and then, through fervent prayers and pleas, the Lord responded, saying, Do you want to be blessed, my child? Then take this, overflowing, shaken together and running over. And God did that in my life. So, ask with faith, piece by piece, for all the income that comes into your hands, all the resources that God entrusts to you. Be generous. 
When God sees in you a channel of blessings, a channel of generosity, that's when everything aligns. The Lord Jesus then looks upon you, deposits unimaginable resources into your life, resources you never even considered, and you start living an abundant life. This is true prosperity. It has nothing to do with selfishness, with boasting, I am blessed. Not at all. The Lord removes all traces of selfishness from our hearts and replaces them with generosity, kindness, faith, and compassion. Help us trust you completely, knowing our days are in your hands. We are certain, my Father, that you are our provider and the one who will guide and sustain us at every step of our journey. Lord Jesus, may your glorious presence remain with us, granting us strength and hope to navigate through adversities and emerge victorious. There's an old hymn that resonates. I'm fond of those older hymns where the singer proclaims. I'm passing through the trial, giving glory to God. Keep giving glory to God. Now, those who understand the path, those who comment, those who write here, I'm moving through the trial, giving glory to God in everything. Give glory, you see. The Lord has taken care of you. And today, humbly, we draw near to God to request discernment, peace of mind. Today's key word, my brothers and sisters, is discernment and peace of mind for making decisions. If you've reached where you are now and aren't content, it's due to the decisions you've made. Small decisions that, when combined, pave the path you tread today. Yet, if you make choices inspired by God, with wisdom, with emotional intelligence, my brother, my sister, your idea flourishes, you know? What you put your hands to turns into gold, holds value. People buy, they purchase your product, they acquire your service, they invest in your resume to hire you. Do you grasp what I mean when I say buying is embracing? The notion is to pay the price for it. It's simple. God will grant you wisdom, you'll see. He'll bestow wisdom upon you. If you're truly with me in this prayer, just right here so I know who's truly with me. So many people. Yet at times, I'm skeptical. Is all this multitude truly with me? Put me down here. I'm genuinely in this prayer. Who wrote this? I'll pray even more for you, because there's no point in praying for those who don't wish it, right? Now, if you're willing, go ahead and write. Together, we are stronger, and with Jesus, we become invincible. Lord, grant us vision, creative vision. The Lord is the God of creativity. Grant us a creative vision to identify target audiences, companies, businesses, new clients. Opportunities for innovation, whether in products or services. Bless us abundantly, my Father. I have many brothers and sisters in this channel who have teenage children, around 14 years old, who are seeking employment. I pray that God opens doors for them, whether as young apprentices or interns. God will surely bless your son or daughter who desires to start their own business. Many parents tend to suppress their children's dreams. My brothers and sisters, please refrain from doing so. The world has changed significantly. There are many youngsters out there who are adept at utilizing the internet for productive purposes. They are compassionate, well-guided, and educated. Support them, both sons and daughters. We often get stuck in a single mindset, believing that the only path is education, college, and a traditional job. While that is a valid route, there are numerous other pathways as well. God is using me to speak to parents today, especially those whose children have identified new markets and opportunities that could lift the family out of financial struggles. However, parents sometimes only see a single path and inadvertently hinder their child's potential. Seek discernment and peace of mind, and my God will assist you. For those with whom God is speaking today about their children, please comment Amen as a response. Declare, I will support my child, encourage them. Encourage, support them, 
be it for husbands or wives who find themselves unemployed, lacking work, and struggling financially. Refrain from murmuring, complaining, and instead, offer support. Stand by your partner. Did you see? They are already suffering greatly from unemployment, especially the man, right? The man is traditionally seen as the provider, as the Bible also teaches. This doesn't mean that a woman can't generate income, of course she can. It doesn't mean that a woman can't earn more than a man, she certainly can. There's no issue if a woman earns more than a man or vice versa. However, each individual has their role in society and within the family. We must understand this well to avoid falling into the misconceptions spread by the world. So, if the husband is without a job, the wife supports, helps, strengthens, and prays for him. No complaining, no throwing it in his face. Likewise, if the wife is without work, she needs to contribute to sustain the family. The husband supports and offers words of encouragement. They help each other always. If both are without employment, I dare say it might be a sign from God for both of you to unite and start a business. There, I've said it. It's true, it's true. God will assist you in embarking on an entrepreneurial journey side by side, husband and wife, helping and triumphing together. Sometimes, it's a family business that will endure through generations. Amen. Jesus loves you so much, you know. Very, very much indeed. I hope this prayer has made sense to you and that our Heavenly Father continues to bless you abundantly in all aspects of life. Stretch out your hands. May the immense love of God, His grace, and the comforting presence of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. Now and forever. Let all say Amen and Amen. Until our next prayer. Today we will be reciting a powerful prayer from Psalm 70. I am certain that this prayer will strengthen your faith, fortify your hope. And you will be strengthened in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Share this prayer with your friends and family. It will undoubtedly bless other lives. Feel free to leave your prayer requests in the comments. I am always reading and presenting all prayer requests before God. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I invite you to become part of this wonderful prayer family. We are here every day, praying and seeking the face of God. We will now read Psalm 70 and then pray to the Lord, calling upon the Almighty God. Psalm 70, written by David, says the following in verse 1, Make haste, O God, to deliver me, make haste to help me, O Lord. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confusion, let them turn back and be disgraced, those who desire my hurt. Let them be turned back because of their shame. Who say, Aha, Aha. May all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you, and may those who love your salvation say continually, Let God be magnified. However, I am afflicted and in need. Hurry for me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer, O Lord. Do not delay. This Psalm 70 shows us. The distressed psalmist, David. He was probably going through a very, very difficult moment in his life. And who has never experienced such? A moment? A moment of anguish, sadness, affliction, to the point where you cry out, saying, God, hurry to deliver me. In verse 5. The psalmist is saying, however, I am afflicted and in need. Have you ever experienced such a moment, a moment of affliction where you feel helpless, alone. But I want you to know that the God who answered David's prayer is the same God we serve. And if your soul is like Psalm 70, anguished, sad, crying out, saying, God, hurry to help me, I come here as a prophet of God in your life to tell you that God will hurry to help you. God will hurry to grant you victory. 
God will hurry to place in your hands what you have been praying to Him for. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that even in this year, you will experience the best of God on earth. You will conquer everything you have asked for and dreamed of. Just persevere, insist, persist. Stay strong in your purpose because God is faithful to fulfill the promise. And in Psalm 70, the psalmist is saying, I am distressed. Hurry, Lord, hurry to deliver me. And maybe you said, just as the psalmist said, Hurry, God. I can't take it anymore. I can't bear it any. Longer. Maybe your strength has run out. Maybe your faith has run out, but God is strengthening your faith through this word and telling. You, hold on a little longer, wait a little longer. God will intervene in this matter. God will provide in this situation, and you will witness the hand of God entering your home, your emotions, your finances, and rebuilding everything that has collapsed, everything that has been destroyed. God will restore it in your life because the blessings of Psalm 70 are descending upon you now. Receive in the name of Jesus. The blessings of Psalm 70 in your life, your home, your health, your finances, your family, in the name of Jesus. The psalmist was sad, distressed. He needed God to hurry and show him favor. And maybe you're in the same need, needing an immediate answer, needing an urgent victory from God. But be calm, be patient. In the spiritual realm, God is working in your favor. Your eyes may not see it, but there are angels of God fighting, warring, and victory will be granted to you. The Bible says that Daniel prayed for 21 days, and he only received the answer to his prayer on the 21st day. However, God had told Daniel, since the first day you set your heart to pray, I heard your prayer. In other words, God had already heard your prayer. But sometimes there is a spiritual battle preventing the miracle from happening. There is a war between the forces of good and evil. But God is putting his hand in this matter. It is where God intervenes, hurry, Lord, hurry to deliver me. And maybe you said, just as the psalmist said, hurry, God. I can't take it anymore. I can't bear it. Any longer. Maybe your strength has run out. Maybe your faith has run out, but God is strengthening your faith through this word and telling you, hold on a little longer, wait a little longer. God will intervene in this matter. God will provide in this situation, and you will witness the hand of God entering your home, your emotions, your finances, and rebuilding everything that has collapsed, everything that has been destroyed. God will restore it in your life because the blessings of Psalm 70 are descending upon you now. Receive in the name of Jesus the blessings of Psalm 70 in your life, your home, your health, your finances, your family, in the name of Jesus. The psalmist was sad, distressed. He needed God to hurry and show him favor. And maybe you're in the same need, needing an immediate answer, needing an urgent victory from God. But be calm, be patient. In the spiritual realm, God is working in your favor. Your eyes may not see it, but there are angels of God fighting, warring, and victory will be granted to you. The Bible says that Daniel prayed for 21 days, and he only received the answer to his prayer on the 21st day. However, God had told Daniel, since the first day you set your heart to pray, I heard your prayer. In other words, God had already heard your prayer. But sometimes there is a spiritual battle preventing the miracle from happening. There is a war between the forces of good and evil. But God is putting his hand in this matter. It is where God intervenes. Satan cannot prevail. Wherever God places his hand, the enemy cannot prevail, 
and God is placing his hand upon your situation, upon what you have been praying for. Victory is guaranteed by the blood of Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary. Hold on to your victory, hold on to your blessing. Do not give up, insist, persist. Stand firm in faith and prayer because God will grant you the blessing, will grant you the victory, and you will come back to this channel to share your testimony. Make this vow with God. Lord, if you deliver what I am asking for, I will return to Bruno Souza's channel and share my testimony of that word from Psalm 70, hurry, God, and I will say. God hurried to hear my prayer, answered my plea, and granted me victory for the glory and praise of your holy name. The only thing we need to understand is that every victory is for the glorification of God's name. We have nothing for ourselves, everything is for God. Everything belongs to God, for from Him and through Him and to Him are all things. When God grants you the house you have been asking for, say, Glory to God. It was God who gave it to me. When God gives you the car you have been asking for, say, Glory to God. It was God who gave it to me. When God gives you the marriage you have been asking for, say, Glory to God. It was God who gave it to me. Of course, we do our part. Of course, we make efforts to conquer, but everything comes from God. It is God who exalts, God who humbles. It is God who impoverishes and God who enriches. It is God who kills and God who makes alive. Everything is under His command, everything belongs to Him. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. For from Him, and through Him are all things. Everything is in the domain of Jehovah, and we serve this God. So take hold of this word. Take hold of the blessings of Psalm 70 in your life and believe with all your heart, O God who hurries to grant victory. And the God of Jacob, He, is not just the God of the past. He is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. He is the God of Jacob, and He has taken charge of your life. And victory is yours. What has God signed in your life? What has God signed for your life? No eraser from hell can erase what God has written for you. Take hold of your blessing. Lift up your head, Turn things around because you were born to conquer, and nothing and no one can take away the presence of God in your life, within your heart. And at this moment, I want to unite my faith with your faith. I want to unite my hope with your hope. I want to unite my certainty, my conviction with your conviction and certainty. I want to unite my prayer with your prayer, and together, in one unified cry, let us pray the prayer of Psalm 70. Amen. Let us pray, Sovereign God, Eternal Father, Creator of heaven and earth, in your holy and powerful, invincible and infallible presence, we stand. We are here to ask of you, we are here to thank you. We are here to pray, to seek your face. You are the one who lives and reigns forever. The psalmist was in a moment of anguish and sadness when he said to you, Hurry, O God, to deliver me. And we want to make the psalmist's words our own. Hurry, O God, to help us. Look upon the tears of your daughter, look upon the tears of your servant who is listening to this prayer, and perhaps is crying and asking you for an answer, a provision that only you can give. Lord, you are the specialist in the impossible. Nothing in heaven, on earth, in the stars, or in the seas is impossible for you. You can do all things. You are the one who walked on water. You are the one who multiplied bread and fish. You are the Lord who healed the paralytic and made him walk again. You are the one who made the blind see. You are the one who raised the dead. 
you are the one who died and rose again on the third day. You are powerful. You are magnificent. You are the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, the Lamb of God, the Bright. Morning Star. Lord, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. You are present in all places, and nothing is hidden from you. You know and you search all things. You know the heart of your servant, the heart of your handmaid. You know our hearts. God, you interpret the tears of the faithful believer. And in this moment of prayer, we want to present ourselves before you. Just as the psalmist, David presented himself in Psalm 70. And he said, But I am poor and needy. Look, O God, upon the affliction, the need of your people. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask of you, we implore before you, we prostrate ourselves at your feet, recognizing your greatness. Recognizing that only you are faithful to fulfill, to accomplish the promises. You are not a man that you should lie, nor a son of man. That you should repent. Your word says that if your people, who are called by your name, will humble themselves, pray, seek your face, and turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. And here we are, humbling ourselves, seeking, praying, repenting for all the mistakes we have made, and we ask you, O God, to do the impossible and the supernatural, to do what the doctors could not do. Do what the lawyers, judges, and prosecutors could not do. Open the way for every cause in the justice system, remove the obstacles, and grant victory to your servant. And to this afflicted mother who has been praying for her child's deliverance from drugs, alcohol, and addiction, set free, Lord, this woman's child and grant victory in the name of Jesus. Lord, to this afflicted and needy mother who prays for her children, who prays without God for her children, grant this gift, this blessing to your servant in the name of Jesus. Rescue, O God, this young woman, this young man from the addiction of alcohol and drugs, and make her a missionary in your presence, make him a preacher of the gospel. God, in the name of Jesus, I present this couple who are in crisis, this couple who is on the verge of divorce. God, in the name of Jesus, reach out with your outstretched hand, enter with your power and restore this marriage. Restore this family that is in crisis and grant victory to God for the glory and praise of your name. We cry out to a God who is faithful, who is mighty, the creator of heaven and earth and everything in the universe. God, we ask you in the name of Jesus to perform the Miracle, Lord, for this woman and this man who are seeking a job opportunity. Open the door of employment. Lord, bless the financial life of your daughter and son so that they can come back here in prayer and share the testimony that the door of employment has been opened for the glory of God. Open the door of employment in the lives of your daughter and son. Bless the material aspect of our lives in the name of Jesus, especially. Bless our spiritual lives, make us more intimate with you, make us Lord, more and more of your friends. Each day, make us more and more excellent worshipers. God, may we seek your face every day not out of pain, but out of love. It is love that we want to seek your presence. God, we trust in your power and we place you above all else, above everyone. You are in first place in our hearts. God, in the name of Jesus. We don't want to serve you just for what you can give us, but we want to serve you, Lord, for who you are in our lives. God, in the name of Jesus, bring your peace, bring your blessing, your love, your favor. May the blessings of Psalm 70 manifest in the lives of this woman and this man who is listening to me. I present before you, O God, 
all the prayer requests that have been placed in the comments of this video. Enter with your blessing, enter with your provision, enter with your answer, and grant victory to your people. In the name of Jesus, we ask. You, in the name of Jesus. We cry out to you in the name of Jesus, we implore you before you, Lord, exalt the humble, bring down the one. Who exalts himself, grant victory to your people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We ask you in the name of Jesus. Come and heal the illnesses, whatever type of illness is in the bodies of your sons and daughters, let every illness disappear now in the name of Jesus. Disappear, for the word of God tells us in Isaiah 53 that the Lord has borne our sicknesses. The punishment that brought us peace was upon you, and by your wounds, we are healed, restored, transformed. So send your healing, send your favor, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hurry, O God, we are asking you as servants. We are imploring you as humble servants in your presence. Without you, we are nothing. Without you, we can do nothing, without you, we will achieve nothing. But with you, Lord, we can do all things, with you, O God, we can overcome the challenges of life. We acknowledge that, without you, we are powerless, for you are our shepherd, and we shall not want. Therefore, O God, I present the requests of your sons and daughters and grant a special victory, an exclusive blessing, a blessing from your throne in the lives of each brother, each sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the blessings of Psalm 70 be upon our lives, and may you, Lord, hasten by your mercy to grant us victory in every area of our lives, so that our testimony may be told and your name glorified in our testimony of victory and blessing. In the name of Jesus, we ask and thank you in advance for all that you have done and all that you will continue to do in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen and thanks be to God, and may God bless your life. Take hold of this word, take hold of this prayer. Believe that the God of David, the God who hastens to help us, is with you, and with God, we are the majority, with God, we will break down walls, and with God, we will overcome giants. With God in our lives, we will overcome the storms. With God, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God of love and mercy. May God bless you greatly, you and your entire family. A big hug, and may the peace of the Lord Jesus be in your heart. And remember, you were born to conquer and experience all the blessings of Psalm 70 in your life. The peace of the Lord Jesus, and may God bless us more and more. Today we will be praying Psalm 46. This psalm is incredibly beautiful, just like the other psalms, and we will be praying verse by verse. We will analyze, examine what each verse reveals to us, and based on that, we will offer a prayer inspired by Psalm 46. God is our refuge. Before we begin, I want to invite you to subscribe to the Activate Notifications channel. If you are already subscribed, please share this prayer with a friend, so they can also participate in this blessed prayer. May God bless your family, may God bless you in a special way. Psalm 46 is a psalm that deeply speaks to my heart, and God will speak powerfully to your heart through this mighty psalm. Psalm 46, verse 1, says that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In this verse, we can perceive that God reveals Himself to us as a refuge, a source of strength, and a readily available help in times of trouble. Anguish is a difficult moment that we all experience. Who hasn't gone through a moment of anguish, a moment of affliction? But this psalm comforts our hearts by showing us a God who, 
besides being a refuge, is also our strength and a present help in moments of anguish. I don't know how you came across this video. Perhaps you, who are listening to me, are feeling sad, downcast. Has a problem arisen in your life? But I want you to know that God is your refuge. God is your strength, He is your refuge because He guards you, He guards you because He loves you. He is your strength because He sustains you with power, grace, love, and kindness. He is your help. In moments of anguish, affliction, He comes to rescue us. That's how the people of Israel were in the midst of the desert. Before them was a vast sea, but God was a very present help in times of trouble. The sea opened up, and the people crossed on dry land. Know that your God is present in moments of affliction, in moments of anguish, in moments of scorn, in the difficult moments of life. God is a refuge and strength for your life, for your soul. And verse 2 tells us, Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. Therefore we will not fear, even if the circumstances of life, even if life's moments are difficult, chaotic, even if the world is in crisis, I will be in Christ. Even if the world is in calamity, I will be in the refuge and strength, guarded and protected by God. When the psalmist in verse 2 says, Therefore we will not fear. He is saying, Because God is my refuge and strength, I will not be afraid. In other words, you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be afraid because your God is a mighty God who guards you, defends you, and is a shield in your life. So he says in verse 2, Therefore we will not fear. I will not be afraid, I will not be afraid, because God is my refuge and strength. Every time fear knocks on the door of your heart, tell fear, God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Do not be afraid, do not be afraid of adversities, problems, conflicts, giants, or walls. Do not be afraid, because the God who called you is faithful, and He guarantees your victory. He guarantees blessings in your home, in your family. The God you serve is a refuge and strength, a present help in times of anguish. And for this reason, the psalmist tells you, therefore we will not fear, even if the earth gives way. Just see the confidence of the psalmist. He is saying that even if the earth moves, even if the earth gives way, he will not fear, even if the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea. In other words, even if an earthquake happens, I will not fear because my God is my refuge and strength. That's what the psalmist is saying in verse 2. And in verse 3, he goes even further, even if the waters roar and foam, even if the mountains tremble with its tumult. In other words, even if everything around me is conflicting, even if everything around me seems difficult, complicated, problematic, even so, I will not fear. Even if the earth gives way, even if the waters roar and foam, even if the mountains are cast into the midst of the sea, even so, I will continue to trust in God because I know that my Redeemer lives and will ultimately rise upon the earth. And the psalmist is teaching us that we need to trust in God. And how were Jesus' disciples in the midst of the storm? Jesus was sleeping in the boat. The storm was raging, and the disciples were fearful, they were afraid. Jesus wanted to teach his disciples that they didn't need to be afraid because the one in the boat was greater than the seas, greater than the winds, greater than everything. Jesus rises up and calms the sea and the wind. Jesus is rising up in your life today to calm the storm, 
to calm the contrary winds. For this reason and for this purpose, do not fear, do not be dismayed, and do not be afraid. Do as the psalmist did in Psalm 46, therefore we will not fear. Even if the earth gives way, and even if the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea, even if the waters roar and foam, even if the mountains tremble with its tumult. In verse 4 of chapter 46, the psalmist goes even further. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. Notice that in this verse 4, the psalmist tells you that there is a river, and this river whose streams make glad the city of God. Which river is the psalmist referring to in Psalm 46? It is the river of living water. It is the same river that Jesus spoke of to the Samaritan woman. In the Gospel of John, it is the same river described in the book of Revelation. It is the river that brings life, also described in the book of Ezekiel about this river. This is the river that brings joy. The waters of this river are the Holy Spirit. Water represents purity. Water represents purification. And the river that purifies is the river that transforms. It is the river that heals diseases. It is the river that cures sin, that washes our spiritual garments, and the waters of this river. It is the Holy Spirit of God that brings joy to the city, the dwelling place of the Most High. This river is now entering your house. This river of God, the purifying river, the transforming river, the healing river, the river that opens doors, the river that brings joy, the river that comforts our hearts. The Holy Spirit of God is entering your house, entering your life, and purifying your soul. And it is about this river that verse 4 is referring to. The river that represents the Holy Spirit of God, and this river, the streams of these waters, brings joy to the city of God. In other words, the Holy Spirit brings joy to our hearts. And in verse 5, it says even more, God is in her midst she shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. Notice that in verse 5 of Psalm 46, it says, God is in her midst. The text does not say that God is on the right side, the left side, in front, or behind. No. The text says that God is in the midst. What does it mean that God is in the midst? When you place something in the middle of a room, everything around it seems to fade away. When you put something in the middle, highlighted in the center of a room, everyone who enters can perceive what is in the middle. Have you noticed? Everything in the center is observed, everything in the center stands out. When the text says in verse 5 that God is in her midst, the psalmist is saying that God is in the center. God is the center of attention. God is in the midst. It means He is the most important thing in my life. God is the most important. That's why He is in the center, in the midst. Notice that when Jesus went to die on the cross, He died in the midst of two thieves. Even in His death, the middle, the center, belonged to Him. God is in the midst, in the center of your life. God is in the midst of your house. God is in the midst of your marriage, your work. When God is in the center of our lives, the Word of God tells us that God is in her midst. In other words, when God is in the center of our lives, highlighted in our lives, we will not be shaken, and God will help us when morning breaks. So allow God to be in the center of your life, and nothing will shake your faith, nothing will shake your hope in God, and the Lord will help you. When morning breaks, in other words, 
God will be ready to help you and come to your aid. And in verse 6, the psalmist declares, The nations rage, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, the earth melts. When the psalmist says, The nations rage, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, the earth melts, we can see the power, the potency of God's voice. Notice that in this verse 6, the psalmist tells us that the Lord utters his voice and the earth melts. In other words, the voice of the Lord is so powerful that the earth melts. The voice of the Lord is so powerful that no stony heart can withstand the voice of God. The voice of the Lord is so powerful, and curses are broken, that all evil, everything that comes against your life, is undone. Why? Because the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is capable of melting the earth. Here the psalmist is trying to exalt. He wants to show us how powerful the voice of the Lord is. And this voice is saying to you today, Daughter, son, do not fear, for I am with you. I am your refuge and your strength. A present help in times of trouble. And in verse 7, the psalmist makes a very important declaration. He says, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. In this verse 7, the psalmist is saying, The Lord of hosts is with us. Hey! I'm telling you that the Lord of hosts is with you. Yes, I'm not saying that the president is with you, that the governor is with you. That the air force, navy, army is with you. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the God who made the heavens and the earth is with you. The God who made the sea and the stars is with you. The one who is with you is greater. The one who is with you is greater than the sun, greater than the moon. The one who is with you is greater than the stars. The one who is with you is greater than the seas. The one who is with you is greater than the giants. Who is with you is greater than the governors. Who is with you is greater than everything and greater than everyone. Who is with you is the one who made the heavens and the earth, the one who parted the Red Sea for the people of Israel to pass on dry land. The one who brought down the walls of Jericho, the one who made the giant fall to the ground, the one who healed the sick, the one who died and rose again on the third day. It is this one who is with you. Therefore, take courage, rejoice, and rest your heart, because the one who is with you is stronger than evil, stronger than darkness, and stronger than wicked deeds. The one who is with you is the Lord God Almighty. So do not be afraid. And Psalm 46, verse 7, tells us, The Lord of hosts is with us. Say it out loud, The Lord of hosts is with me. Is with us, and I will not fear. The God of Jacob is our refuge. In verse 8, Psalm 46 continues to say, Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has brought on the earth. Here the psalmist extends an invitation in verse 8, Come. Behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has brought on the earth. The psalmist is saying, Come and see, come and see how powerful God is. Come and see the works he has done. When the text speaks of the desolations he has brought on the earth, it means that God does great things. Notice that he did something tremendous in Egypt, bringing ten plagues upon them to liberate his people. See how God parted the sea for the people of Israel to pass through and closed it to prevent the Egyptians from following. So, what desolations has he brought on the earth? That is why the psalmist says, Come and behold, 
Come and see how faithful God is in your life. How faithful God is in your home, how faithful God is to you. And in verse 9, he says even more, he makes wars cease. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth, he breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two, he burns the chariots with fire. This verse 9 is very interesting because in verse 7, the psalmist says that the Lord is the Lord of hosts. However, in verse 9, he says that the Lord makes war cease. In other words, God is a God who is the Lord of hosts, but what is God's battle? God's battle is to cease wars. What does that mean? Ceasing wars means God is saying, I will cease the wars in your family. I will cease the wars in your workplace. I will cease the conflicts, the fights. I will bring peace among your family members. I will bring peace in your city, in your neighborhood. In other words, God is the God who is the Lord of hosts, but he comes to cease, to stop the wars, the struggles, the trials, and the afflictions of life. Very powerful. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. It is for him to cease wars to the end of the earth. What will he do? He will break the bow, cut the spear in two, and burn the chariots with fire. And in verse 10, the psalmist is filled with God and he says, Be still, and know that I am God, I will be exalted among the nations, I will be exalted in the earth. This verse 10 is very strong, very powerful. God is saying to me, to you, be still, calm down. Why so much anxiety, why so much hurry? Be still, be still in the Lord. Verse 10, Psalm 46 is saying, this calms your heart. Do not be anxious, do not rush. Rest in the Lord. Be still in your soul. Be still, rest. Be still, God is saying in verse 10 of Psalm 46, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. Be still your soul, rest in the Lord, for He takes care of you. He watches over you. He works for you. He fights for you. He heals your soul, He transforms your life. He lifts you up with power. He is your refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. For this reason, be still. Know that God will be exalted on the earth and among the nations. And in verse 11, the psalmist concludes the psalm by saying, the Lord of hosts is with us. He reinforces what he said in verse 7, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Notice that in verse 7 and in verse 10, the psalmist makes the same declaration. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I was wondering with God, asking God why the psalmist repeated the same phrase twice in Psalm 46. In verse 7, he says, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And in verse 11, in verse 11, I apologize, I said verse 10, in verse 11 the psalmist repeats the same phrase again. In verse 10, he says, Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, I will be exalted on the earth. And in verse 11, he repeats what he said in verse 7, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Why does he repeat it twice? God ministered to my heart. God spoke to me. Why does the psalmist repeat the same phrase twice? Do you know why? 
It's because many times we forget that the one who is with us is powerful. Have you noticed that in times of affliction, in moments of anguish? Sometimes we think that God is not listening to our prayer. That's how the disciples were in the boat when the storm was raging. They forgot that the Lord of hosts, the one who calms the sea and the wind, was there in the boat. The psalmist repeats the same phrase twice in verse 7 and again in verse 11 because he wants to strengthen, strengthen in our minds that the one who is with us is the Almighty God. And my sister and my brother, the one who is with you is not a weak God. The one who is with you is not a God who needs help. The one who is with you is not a God who walks with a crutch. The one who is with you is not a small God. The one who is with you is an almighty God. That's why the psalmist repeats in verse 7 and verse 11 that the one who is with us is the Lord of hosts. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And God, repeating, God only repeats what we need to hear when we need to hear it multiple times. That's why in Psalm 46, he repeats it twice in verse 7 and verse 11. He, the Lord of hosts, is with us. He is with us to give us victory. He is with us to heal, transform, lift up, strengthen, completely transform our lives. So do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed, for the Lord of hosts is in your life. Amen. Claim this word. Claim what God has promised for you. I want to invite you at this moment to pray with me. Let's pray to the Lord, asking for His divine providence, seeking healing, salvation, and the blessings of Psalm 46 in our lives. Close your eyes and pray with me. Holy Spirit of God, we have meditated on each verse of Psalm 46. And we believe, O God, that you are the God of the impossible. You are the God who accomplishes the impossible in our lives. You are our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. We will not fear even if the mountains crumble and everything around us shakes, for we are confident in you. We are rooted in the rock who is Christ Jesus. In this moment of prayer, I want to present the life of your servant who is listening to me, the life of your handmaid who is listening to me. Come and bless, come and strengthen, come and lift up, come with your grace, come and give encouragement to her and to him in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I ask you, God, to send your angel and may your angel undo every entanglement, remove every obstacle that is blocking the victory of your daughter and your son. Guard your people, Lord, for you are the Lord of hosts. We believe in your power. You are the Lord of hosts, and you are with us to protect, guard, defend, and guide us. Therefore, Lord, fight for us. Come and cease the wars to the ends of the earth. Put an end to the conflicts in households, the strife between couples, the conflicts at work, the conflicts in the church, and the conflicts in families. Let them all cease now, let them be annihilated. Let all evil, every negative force, every attack, and every counterattack from the enemy be undone by the power of Jesus' blood. Lord, cover our families, our homes with your blood. Defend us, protect us, guard us with your power and mercy. God, in the life of this woman listening to me and this man listening to me, pour out your blessings, your gifts, your virtue, and your victory. Shower us with blessings, grace, and victory over the lives of my sister and my brother, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask for the blessings of Psalm 46 in our lives, in our families, in our finances, and in our emotions. 
Lord God, bring healing, bring liberation, bring transformation, open doors, and grant victory. For you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. In the name of Jesus, we take possession, Lord, of all the blessings, promises, and gifts that you have for our lives. In the name of Jesus, Amen and thanks be to God. Repeat this phrase with me, I take possession of all the blessings of Psalm 46 in my life. Repeat it again. God is my refuge and strength, a present help in difficult times. Say it louder, say it for hell to hear, for heaven to hear, for people to hear. Declare for everyone to hear, God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. In God, I can do all things because He strengthens me. Amen. Take hold of victory. Believe that you were born to overcome, and nothing and no one can steal from you the blessings of God that are in your life. Amen. May God bless you. If you are not subscribed to the channel yet, subscribe and enable notifications. May God bless you. May the peace of the Lord and the prosperity of Christ be in your life. May the blessings of Psalm 46 be upon you. May God bless your life and your family in a very special way. Today, we will be praying Psalm 125, and I believe that through this prayer, God will bless your family. God will bless your financial life. God will bless your entire life. God will bless your marriage and your children. God will bless your life. Believe with all your heart and most. Importantly, God will bless your spiritual life. Our spiritual life needs to be in fullness before God, and this psalm will be a fortress for your spirit. It will lift your spirits, strengthen you, recharge your energy, and you will glorify the name of the Lord. Before we begin, I want to invite you to share this video with a friend. It may bless someone else's life. If you wish, leave your prayer request or comment below. I always read the comments and include the requests in my prayers. Amen. Let us meditate on Psalm 125 and understand what God wants to reveal to us through His Word. Don't leave the video, stay until the end because God has a powerful revelation to deliver to you through this mighty psalm. Psalm 125. God will speak strongly to your heart. The answer you need will come into your life today. Believe with all your heart and soul. Let's open the book of Psalms. If you have a Bible near you, open it to the book of Psalms and follow along with me. Psalm 125 says, verse 1, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. In this verse, we can perceive God's faithfulness in the lives of those who trust in Him. The text says that those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. So, my friend, what has been shaking your faith? What has been shaking your hope? What has been shaking your life? What is troubling you? Because the text says that those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. I know that we are made of flesh and bone, and sometimes we feel weakness, we feel discouraged. It's normal for that to happen, but the sorrows of life, the weaknesses, the difficult moments cannot take away our faith, cannot take away our hope in Jesus Christ. The tribulations, the struggles of life cannot dim the brightness of the Holy Spirit on your face. Do not allow your faith to be shaken by the struggles and adversities you may face. Yes, you may go through difficult times. You may face challenges, 
but these difficult moments will not determine your faith, your defeat, or your failure. On the contrary, the difficult moment you may be experiencing is making you stronger, stronger in God, and your faith will not be stolen. The enemy may think he will destroy you. But Satan has two jobs, to rise and to fall because the one who is with us is greater than the darkness. The one who is with us is greater than the enemies. The one who is with us is the Almighty God, and He is faithful in your life. He is faithful in your story. And the text says that those who trust in the Lord are like the mountains of Zion that cannot be shaken. Notice that spring, autumn, summer, and winter pass. Seasons pass, time passes, but a mountain doesn't move. The earthquake may come, but the mountain doesn't move. The storm may come, but the mountain doesn't move. If you look at the hills, you see the mountains. You will realize that year after year, the mountains remain firm in the same place. That's how it is for those who trust in the Lord. Storms may come, struggles may arrive, but you will not move from the position God has placed you in. In the position God has placed you, no one can take you away. Your position is that of a child of the king, a daughter of the king, a son of the king. Your position is that of a princess of Christ, a prince of the Lord, and no one can remove you from this position. That's why you are like the unshakable Mount Zion in God. Say yes with faith, I am like Mount Zion, unshakable in the presence of the Lord. Do you know why you are unshakable? Because you can. Do all things through Him who strengthens you. Do you know why you are unshakable in God? Because the Lord, the Creator of heaven and earth, is your strong shield. He is the one who guards you, guides you, protects you, and defends you. He is the Lord of your life. That's why you are unshakable in God. And the text says in verse 1, those who trust in the Lord. Do you trust in God? If you trust in God, then you are like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken. So, do not allow the circumstances of life to shake you. Stand firm because Victory is coming. Stand firm because God is opening doors for you. Stand firm in the presence of the Lord. Do not look to the left or right. Look ahead. Look to Christ because that's where your help comes from. That's where your answer comes from, and God is answering. Your prayer and God wants to tell you, daughter, calm down, be at peace because I am working in secret, and I will honor you openly. I am your God, your shepherd, your healer, your judge, and I am opening doors for you. Stand firm in the promise because God is never late, and He does not come too early. God arrives at the right time, at the appointed time, and He fulfills the promise He made to you. And in verse 2, the psalmist says, As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds His people, both now and forevermore. Verse 2 is declaring a promise, and just as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds His people. Who are the people of God? You and I. God is around us. He is around us to defend us. He is around us to guard us. He is around us to protect us and grant us the victory we desire and need. God is around your family. God is around your home. God is around your work. God is around your life. And no evil arrow shall touch you because God is around you. Believe. Believe with all your heart because the enemy cannot touch you when there is a mighty God surrounding you. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The one who is, the one who was, the Almighty, is around you, and you shall not be shaken because the Lord is with you. God is with you even in the moments when you 
thought of giving up. God was there, holding your hand, saying, Daughter, son, do not fear, I am with you. Even in the moments. When you looked around and said, No one understands me, no one comprehends me. Hey, is there a God who understands you? Is there a God who comprehends you? And he is carrying you in his arms, daughter. Son, victory is coming to your home, to your life. Embrace this word. Believe that God is using this humble servant to confirm the promise in your life through this powerful word. Just as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, surrounding our lives. Verse 3 tells us, For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, so that the righteous may not stretch out their hands to do wrong. This text is saying that the injustice of the wicked, the evil of the wicked, the ungodliness, will not remain upon us because God will give us deliverance. God will not allow the injustice, represented by the scepter of wickedness, to be upon you. The scepter of wickedness represents the injustice that we often experience in our daily lives, the injustice we sometimes face among friends and even among family members. But the scepter of wickedness, the injustice, will not be upon your life. On the contrary, God will rebuke those who oppress you, those who persecute you, those who slander you, those who gossip about you, those who speak ill of you. God will rebuke them. And show everyone that he is your God, your shepherd, your judge, your advocate. Because whoever touches you, touches God. That's why he is within us and at the same time around us to protect and guard us. So, for this reason, be encouraged, rejoice, and trust in them. Lord, because God is your judge, the one who guards you, the one who goes before you to grant you victory. And verse 4 tells us, Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are upright in their hearts. Here the psalmist is pleading, declaring, asking the Lord to do good to those who are good, to those who are upright in heart. Remain with a righteous heart before God, for the Lord will do good to you. Jesus said that if an earthly father, being imperfect, gives good gifts to his children, imagine how much more will God, who is perfect, do good. God is good. Let me repeat for you to understand. God is good. You know what that means. It means that God's goodness is in your life. It means that this goodness opens doors for you. This goodness comforts you, this goodness lifts your head, this goodness gives you courage, grace, strength, and energy to continue. Marching in the presence of the Lord. May the goodness of God visit you in this moment, right now as you are listening to me. Receive the Holy Spirit of God, strengthening you and saying, I am giving you strength to keep walking in my presence. Be encouraged and rejoice. Because goodness, my goodness, is upon your life, says the Lord. And the text goes on to say, in the last verse of Psalm 125, it says, But, as for those who turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead them away with evildoers. Peace be upon Israel. In this fifth verse, the psalmist concludes the psalm by saying that those who walk in crooked paths will be punished by God, they will be judged by God. Those who practice evil will be judged by God. When we turn on the news, we see so much violence, so much evil. Hey! No evil will escape. The punishment of the Lord. But he concludes the psalm by saying, Peace be upon Israel. And do you know who the Israel of God is? You and I. We are the spiritual Israel of God. Peace will be upon our lives, upon our homes, upon our families. Reading Psalm 125 now, we can understand the security we have in God. We can understand the refuge we have in God. 
By reading this Psalm 125, we can comprehend that God makes us strong in difficult times. That God will judge the wicked with righteousness. And in moments of tribulation, the Lord will be our peace, our rest. If you are going through a difficult time, receive this word of encouragement and spiritual strengthening. Remain firm in the presence of the Lord, trusting in Him because God is making you like the mountain of Zion, unshakable in the presence of God, unshakable to receive victory. For God prepares the victory, and He also prepares our lives to receive the victory. God is making you like the unshakable mountain of Zion. So when the victory, the complete blessing, arrives in your life, you can rejoice powerfully, take a deep breath, and say, Only the Lord is God, my sister and my brother. We are passing through this world, but one thing is certain, as long as we are here on this earth, we can rejoice in the presence of the Lord and enjoy the rich blessings that the Lord gives us. Therefore, rest your heart, rest your soul, be at peace, sleep peacefully, because God is taking care of your tomorrow, and what you are asking for in prayer, the Lord says to you, I am working in silence, and I will honor you publicly. Just trust in me, because those who trust in the Lord are like the mountains of Zion that cannot be shaken but endure forever. Amen. Claim your victory. Take hold of the blessings of Psalm 125 in your life. In this moment, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your life and ask God for the blessings of Psalm 125 in your home, in your financial life, in your emotional life, in your ministry, and in your spiritual life. May God bless you abundantly. Amen. Close your eyes, focus on God. I want to pray for you, regardless of what your problem may be, I am here to pray for you. It is my pleasure to pray for your life because your victory is my victory. I want to rejoice in your victory, and I would greatly appreciate it if when you receive it, you come back here and comment, sharing your testimony of victory. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign God and Eternal Father, Creator of the ends of the earth, we are in your holy presence, and we have just read and meditated. On Psalm 125. We understand that those who trust in you are like the mountains of Zion, unshakable and enduring forever. God, listen to the prayer of this humble servant who is asking for your blessing in this moment for your servant on the other side, who is asking for this blessing. Your child is asking for this blessing. We have just read and meditated on Psalm 125 and understood in this psalm that those who trust in you are like the mountain of Zion that will not be shaken. Therefore, strengthen us in your presence to continue marching with the power and authority of your Spirit. The Holy Spirit of truth fills our hearts with faith. Through this prayer, may the hearts of my sister and my brother be filled with faith and conviction in you. The Holy Spirit of God goes where the doctor cannot go, where the lawyer, judge, or prosecutor cannot go. Perform the extraordinary miracle in the life of this woman and this man who is listening to me in this moment. God, in the name of Jesus, enter the hearts and remove all sadness, all anguish, now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. May your peace and mercy be in this house, in this family. May your holy peace, Lord, be poured out in our hearts. God, remove all anxiety, all worry, all anguish, all sadness. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are feeling any anguish at this moment, place your hand on your heart. If you are feeling any sadness right now, Place your hand on your heart, and I will command that this sadness, this anguish, be replaced with joy, trust, and faith in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Anguish, sadness, depression, fear, anxiety. I give you the command now, in 
The name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in the name of Jesus, I will count from one to three, and you will leave. Sadness, anguish. Bitterness, leave. In the name of Jesus, I count one. Sadness, this heart is not your place. Depression, you have no power over this life. I count. 2. I decree God's blessing upon this house, this family, this life that is listening to me in this moment. I count 3. Receive peace. Receive love, receive grace, receive encouragement, receive virtue, receive power, receive strength to overcome. Receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God in your life at this moment. Open your mouth and say, I am a conqueror, I am a conqueror in Christ Jesus, because I trust in the Lord, and I am like Mount Zion. Say it loudly, say it for hell to tremble. Say it for your heart to hear. Say it for the angels to listen. Say it like this, I am unshakable in God. Because I trust in the Lord. Therefore, I am like Mount Zion, unshakable and enduring forever. Say it loudly, I am unshakable in God and I endure forever. Say yes to the blessings of Psalm 125. They are in my life, in my family, in my home. They are upon me. In the name of Jesus, take possession of victory and believe. God is with you. Amen. All honor, all glory, all praise, and majesty be to the Lord. God Almighty forever. And may God bless your life. May this psalm have refreshed your soul. If you are not subscribed yet, subscribe to the channel here on YouTube. Enable notifications so that whenever a new prayer is released, you receive it firsthand. And remember, you were born to conquer and live every promise of God.